Hello, everybody. Welcome to the STEM Lockdown Digital School and welcome to your grade six English first additional language lesson. Today is a writing lesson. Somebody, I saw somebody asked in the chat, is, is it writing today? And the answer is yes, it's a writing lesson. So I hope you've got your pen and paper ready and you're ready to do some writing today, right? Good. So this is teacher Fiona, your English first additional language teacher and hello for today. Right, what are we going to do today? Well, we've got three different things to write today. We're working from term two, week seven and eight of the CAPS curriculum for writing. And the first thing we're going to write is a definition. So we're going to notice how you write a definition. And then we're going to write a definition. Okay, good. And uh, the, Kahoot, the Kahoot lesson is going to be tomorrow. All right. Kahoot tomorrow, and it will be testing you on everything to this week. Um, you get the second thing that you're going to be writing is a simple questionnaire, and you're going to do a bar graph from some data that I give you, and then you're going to write a short report. And the third thing that you're going to be writing is to express an opinion. Okay, so we're going to write a paragraph to express and explain a, an opinion. Good. So if there's time, we'll do those instructions of the board game that we didn't get time to do on Monday, but I don't know if there will be time for that. So we'll have to see. Great. Let's go on. So now when I say to you, write a definition, what do I mean? Who'd like to tell me what I mean by that? Write a definition. Any ideas? Who's going to put their hand up today and tell me what I mean? Yay, Molly, Molly. So what do, you, what do I mean, Molly? Ma'am, I'm struggling to unmute Molly. Okay. All right. so Sorry, Molly. Let's go. Let's. Molly, you're up. Ma'am. Hello, Molly. Yes, and um, ma'am, uh, when you only say a, defi a, defi a definition. You, you are meaning that uh, it is a um, yes. meaning of... Okay, your sound is quite dumb. Ma I can't really hear. Okay, let's, can you say that again, Mali? It's a meaning of... of a word. Okay, that's it. How to write the meaning Let of a word. Okay. okay, that's good. That's good. Thank you, Molly. You've got it. Right. Now, it sounds very simple, doesn't it? Just to write a definition of a word, but it's not as simple as we think. So let me explain what I mean. So a definition is a, a statement of the meaning of a word. Sometimes there's a group of words, there's even a sign or a symbol, okay? We usually find definitions in a dictionary, whether an online or an offline dictionary. I wonder if you use an offline or an online dictionary. Do you, do you, I'm sure you all have a dictionary for school, right? We'll have a dictionary for school. And um, we have to, but have you ever used an online dictionary? So I use an online dictionary all the time because I'm usually on my on my laptop, and um, and that's where I get all my information from. Now, a, a, um, a definition is more than just an explanation of the meaning of the word. So if you go to an online dictionary and you ask for a certain word, this is what will they'll give you. They'll show you how it's spelt, 
right? Then they'll also tell you what part of speech the word belongs to, whether it's a noun or a verb or an adverb or adjective. They'll tell you that. Sometimes they'll even tell you more than that about the part of speech. It will also show you how to pronounce the word, which is quite nice with an online dictionary. You can hear the pronunciation. And um, it, or then it gives an explanation of the word, which is really what we want to know about the word in the beginning. And, um, and then as, um, I'm, I'm so glad you're all writing in the chat box, I love it. And then it gives you an example sentence. So there's five parts to a definition. Okay, five parts. So let's have a look at a definition. I went into um, the Oxford Learner Dictionary online and I asked them for the word coronavirus. And this is what they gave me. So you can see that they have um, they've shown me how to spell the word coronavirus. Then they've told me that it's a noun. And further down, they've said it's, uh, it's both an uncountable and a countable noun. And then they've given two um, people pronouncing the word. One is a man and one is a lady. And they both pronounce the word so I can hear how it's pronounced. After that, they give an explanation of the meaning of the word. Uh, a type of virus that can cause pneumonia and other diseases in humans and animals. And then it shows you how to use it in a sentence. Precautions were taken to try and limit the spread of coronavirus. Okay, so you can see the five things there. Now, I want to know if you could write down what those five things are. What was number one? What was number one? Uh, don't tell me, just write it in the chat box for now. What was the first one? I'm going to see if anyone gets it right in the chat box. Okay, someone's got it. How to spell it. Good. How to spell it. What is the second one? What's the second one? The part of speech. Good. Noun. What is the third one? How to say it. How to pronounce it. Good. And the fourth one, what's after pronounce? What is the fourth one? The definition of it, the actual meaning of the word. Good. And the last one is the sentence, uh, example sentence. Good. So just to go. that because you've got it. So just to go through it again, how to spell the word, the part of speech, how to pronounce the word, explanation of the meaning, and the example sentence. You've got that, right? You understand that because I'm going to ask you now to write a sentence, a, a, a definition, and then I'm going to ask somebody if they would like to read out their definition showing those five things. Okay. Okay. So, um, so this is your first writing task. Write a definition for one of the following words and make sure it has all five parts. So they can choose either disease or school. Right, I'm gonna give you some time. Write the definition and then um, put all five parts and put your hand up. finished and they've got the definition and they want to to tell me what it is right should we choose Heidi Shakira ma'am Shakira yeah hello Shakira 
Um, I'm doing the definition of disease. Disease. Okay. It is, it is spelled D I S E A S E. Excellent. Yes. A noun. It's a noun, right? Noun's disease. Good. The definition is a disorder of, of structure or function in a human, animal, or plant, especially one that produces specific symptoms or that affects a specific location and is not simply a direct result of physical injury. Okay, good. That explains what a disease is. And <clears throat> an example sentence? A bacterial... Here are the top search results. Bacterial meningitis is quite a rare disease. Okay, good, 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 good. I've got my phone on here with a clock. And um, every now and again, I, my phone listens to what I'm saying and then it gives an answer. Isn't that strange? These, these smartphones listen to you. Okay, who? That was excellent, Shakira. Well done. Now I'd like somebody that has definition of school. Anybody that did school that would like to share what they did? All right, anybody? Okay, Kherdi, who will we choose? Jody, Hello, ma'am. Hi, Hello, Jody. Ma right, did you I'm do school? school? Yes, ma'am. Good. School is spelled S-C-H-O-O-L. Good. It's pronounced school. Okay, good. School is a place where, where children learn under a roof or in a building, and they learn different kinds of things about the world. Okay, good. That's a good definition. Um, and then, what, part, what part of speech is school? It's a noun. Good. And then an example sentence. Example sentence. My sister goes to a big school. Very good. Well, well done to those two people. Very pleased with your answers. Well done. Okay. So now we're going to go on. That's our first writing task. Well done. So... Now we're going to do our second writing task. Now, you know, on Monday in our listening and speaking lesson, we learned about doing a questionnaire and a survey and all that sort of thing. Remember that? Now, did you do your homework this week? Because I did put a questionnaire piece of homework for you. Right, this, this is what your homework said for Tuesday's homework. I said, Create a survey and carry it out on your family. Create six questions on this questionnaire. And then you had to um, test your family on it, record their rating and draw a bar draft graph and write a short report. I wonder if anybody actually did that. Did anybody do that homework? No one that I can see in the chat box. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, so step one, we're going to review now what we did on Monday. We're gonna review it because right here in this lesson, you're going to write a, a create a questionnaire, right? Okay, so on Monday, we show I showed you this particular form here, how to write a questionnaire. And the question that we wanted to know was, how can you protect yourself from COVID-19? And then I said that you should create six questions and give a scale. So every time you ask, you have a sample of people, say you choose four people or three people, or even six people, they have to answer your question and with one of those answers, either one, a two, a three, or a four. Remember that? Okay. So we have the three parts to this questionnaire. Okay, then um, 
we, I showed you my questionnaire and I showed you the questions. How do you keep, do you keep the social distancing? Do you wash your hands regularly? Do you wear a mask outside the home? Do you avoid touching your face? Do you use sanitizer? Do you cover your nose and mouth? And then if six people had to answer that, they would choose the rating scale over there. Okay. So there are the six questions. You don't always have to have six questions. You can have four questions or five questions or three questions. People do surveys all the time to find out how other people think about things. So that was step two. Step three was after asking six people, I wrote down what they put into the rating scale. They could either put a one, a two, a three, or a four. Remember that? Okay. And then step four was um, gathering the data. So, um, Molly, did you want to say something? I wanted to say I did my homework. Oh, you did it. Oh, fantastic, Molly. Fantastic. Did you do the same yes, one about the coronavirus? Yes, ma'am. And what did your what did you find? What was your 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 finding after you've looked at your graph, your bar graph? Ma'am, uh, by keeping social distances, I found uh, four four total. Okay. So when you asked all the questions and you looked at the bar graph, what was your conclusion? Did you ask your family? Remember? Yes, ma'am. And so would you say they're very good about doing the right things with, they, keep, they know how to keep themselves safe? Is that what you found? Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am, they are good, but but they are good, but uh, that they're not good of, of, to avoid touching their faces. Okay, that's everybody's problem. Hey, everybody's problem. Okay, very good, Molly. I'm very pleased to hear that. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so let's go on. We now have to gather our data, which means you add up the marks. But when you look at it like this, it doesn't really tell you much. You can see that um, 21 is the best and eight is the, uh, the, the least, but you actually need to take those numbers and put them on a graph, right? So that's why we created a bar graph like this. We put the questions down the bottom and the total number of points that you could get if everybody put four up the side, and then we filled in the answers. And then once you've got a bar graph, it's much easier to read. You can see immediately this group was very good with their hand sanitizers when they got out. They were good with social distancing, but the, the weak area was touching their face. Okay, good. So that was um, that part. And then usually with a questionnaire, you can write a, a quick report, you say, the best, the weakest area was this. The strongest area was that. I also found that they were good at that. And my conclusion is whatever it is. So that was what we did on Monday. So now today we want to write a questionnaire. And this is the questionnaire that I have put there. What is your favorite TV program? So can you make a very quick draft of this questionnaire. Don't use a ruler or anything, but just have, what is your favorite TV program? And then put six questions, but you don't have to have six. And then leave a space for rating and then leave a space for creating a rating scale. So, so copy that questionnaire quickly and see if you can come up with um, the question. Okay, we won't have time to wait a long time. So I just want you to get into the um, habit of creating this questionnaire because that is the, the writing task in the caps. Okay, you're all writing. You're just doing a rough 
a rough thing with your pencil, making um, uh, three columns and six place for six questions and four rating scale. Okay. That's right, JD is saying, if you practice it, that's how you get to know it. If you, do, if you just look at something, it goes out of your memory as soon as the lesson's finished. But if you practice doing it, that's when you remember. Well done, JD, that's excellent advice. Excellent advice. Okay, everybody got that? Um, you're busy doing that. Let's put on a tiny bit of music. Anybody, yes, you can just write four or five questions. I just put six, but it can be three, four, or five. So, would anybody like to tell me what their questions were? Anybody like to tell me what their questions were? So, I'm going to ask um, Heidi to choose somebody. Heidi's our host. Adele, ma'am. Adele, okay. Now, what? What programs did you put? Ma'am, Adele has um, <clears throat> muted herself again. Okay, so who should we have? We only have Molly. Okay, Molly, what have you put down? Ma Molly? Which programs did you put? Ma'am, I only have four questions. Is it five? That's fine. The first one is, do you love TV? Okay. The second one is, what program do you like the most? Okay. The third one, do you have a timetable about watching TV? Okay. And the fourth one is, what is your favorite channel? Okay. And then what is that going to tell everybody? What they what they think about TV? Okay. Yes, ma'am. And what did you do for your rating scale? Um, the first one is I don't do this things. Okay. Yes. The second one is I only do a few ones. Okay. The third one is I like doing this, but I can't. Okay. And then the fourth one is I used to do these things. Okay. Good, Molly. That's a very good. Um, that sounds very good. And now you must try it out on your family. Okay. <laughs> try it out on your family, and then you can tell us what you found out on another in another lesson. Well done. Does anybody else want to say what? They did. So Molly didn't choose particular programs. She had other questions. You can set it out any way that you like. Anyone else want to say anything? Okay, not at the moment. All right. So let's go on. I'm going to pretend that I have done this. So what I put there, um, education programs, sports events, movies, reality shows, TV soapies, and cookery shows. And then I made a rating scale and I asked six people and that was their answers. So the next step would be to add those up, right? To add up those rating, the rating scale. And um, I found just looking at that number that the most popular were movies, right? The most popular were movies and the least popular were the education programs, strangely enough. There we go. So then I put the marks there. And now um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a bar graph. So I put a, made a bar graph like that. 
because I've got six questions and they're all out of four, I've made it out of 24. Okay, some people are saying they're confused. Why? Uh, what are you confused about? What are you confused about? So let me, JD, what do you want to say? Ma yes, ma'am. When you yes. do this table, ma'am, must you ask questions about the TV or must you use TV program? Okay, so let me go back to the beginning. Uh, my thing was, what is your favorite TV program? That was my thing, but you could do anything, you know? So anything, like Molly, she made other questions. But I wanted to know what type of program they liked. So instead of giving the names of particular programs, I just chose education programs, sports events. But you could put the names of programs. It would be up to you. It would be up to you. Okay, up to you. Uh, all I want you to know is how to do it. Whatever, whatever you decide is going to be your question, I just want you to know how to do it. Okay. So I just chose the names of programs, but you notice that Molly did it differently. She asked other questions. So um, here's a bar graph. And then if I had counted up all the marks and put it on the bar graph, put the names down below, I would have found with my little group, um, that um, most of them liked movies or soapies. None of them watched the education group programs and some of them liked sports programs. Okay, so uh, what is that question? Can, can you put names of TV programs? You can, you can. You could say, um, uh, what are some TV programs? The news. Or you could put your actual programs that you like to watch and ask people what, if they like those. That's true, you could. Exactly like, like Nick, JR, etc. Yes, you could do that. You could do anything you liked, actually, um, just to find out people's opinions. Nicola Dean, okay. Okay, so let's go on. Do, do you all understand how to actually write a questionnaire? Because that is the big thing, how to write that questionnaire and how to carry it out. Good. And then if I had written a report, I would have said, I found that my group's weakest point was, they didn't like the TV education programs. Their strongest area was that they liked movies. They also liked soapies. I don't know if Nicola Dean is a soapy or Disney XD. So you're writing Disney Channel. Yes, you could put that type of thing easily. That would make an interesting survey. And then my conclusion is that um, people love to get lost in movies. Understand? Okay, so now we're going to our third type of writing task, and we did this early on Monday, and that's expressing an opinion. So do you remember on Monday, we just did number one and number two. We said when you give an opinion, you start with words like, I think, I believe, I am of opinion, my opinion is, I feel, I would say, and then you give two, you, two reasons for your opinion. I've added on three and four. Then you can mention an opinion that someone else might have that's different to your opinion, and you could restate your opinion. So we've got those four parts. Now, I wonder if anybody would like to do an opinion. I'm gonna give you four options. Number one, school should stay closed until there's no more COVID, or oh, I put spelled COVID wrong, COVID-19. Uh, all children should go to the school nearest to where they live. 
schools should use both computers or tablets and exercise books in the classroom. And classes at school should always consist of 25 children or less. So who would like to give an opinion on one of those and try and keep to all four of those points? So first of all, start with, I think, and you could make your statement, give two reasons why. Say so some other people might think that da 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 da, but I don't agree because I think da 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 da. Okay, who'd like to give a an oral opinion? So debate people that do debating do this all the time. They give opinions and they try and prove their points. Okay, who's going to be? Who are we going to choose, Heidi? Hello, ma'am. Hello, who's that? Heidi. JD, great, JD. Okay. Um, so, yes. I I I believe that school should should stay closed until COVID nineteen is gone, ma'am. So so the children doesn't get any infected, ma'am. Or, okay. or or get sick, ma'am. Okay. Oh, those are two reasons. They don't get infected and they don't get sick. Okay. So then number three, mention an opinion that someone else might have that you don't agree with. Other people think that school should start now, but I still believe that da 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 da. Okay. Good JD, well done. Okay, who else would like to give an opinion? Anyone else? Hi ma'am. Molly. Molly. Okay, Molly. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I believe I. I be, I feel like uh, school should not should use computers and tablet because of, and they must allow kids to have Wi-Fi. If uh -huh. so, if kids go with computers and tablets at school, they they must allow us to. They must give us the. Password of the of the free Wi-Fi at school. Yes. Okay. And why do you have that opinion? What are your two reasons? Man, because of internet is faster mm -hmm. than than checking in the in the textbook. And okay. And you can you can be used to type in the computer when we have serious problems. You can email someone quickly or type a message to someone quickly, 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 quick, quick, quick. Okay, good. Yes. And then mention an opinion that someone else might have that you don't agree with. Other people might think um, that computers and tablets are not are. Uh, are useless to them. But I don't agree because I think da 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 da. Okay. I agree. <laughs> well done, Molly. Well done. That's a very good, very good. Well done. Does is there anybody else that wants to try um and who has an opinion about um the other number two or number three? Number My two or number one. three. Right, Michael? I think schools shouldn't open when Corona is finished because it is impossible for Corona to finish. Some people will be cured and some will still have it. Okay, okay, good. So you think schools should open? Yes, ma'am. Okay, because, and, and, and mention an opinion that someone else might have that you don't agree with. Other school, people might, yeah. School should only open when it's safe and Corona is finished. But you don't agree with that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, because you're saying it's going to be here a long time, then people will never go to school again for a long time. Okay, very good. That's an opposite opinion. And I, uh, thank you very much, Michael. Okay, good. Okay. Is there anybody else that would like to, to give an opinion on something? And then we'll move on. Molly, ma'am. Molly, again, Molly. Ma'am, uh, 
I I I think um during this COVID nineteen, if you go to school, we must be twenty in a, it, we must not be over twenty because uh, it, <laughs> and if coronavirus spread, and if coronavirus spreads quickly, um uh, no more in school and then everyone will be tested and that and that will be boring because of other children are ready to go to high school are ready to go to the next grade yes next year that that's okay, clever good good nolly good so you're choosing number four there you think that they yes. should be more than 25 awesome okay yeah. we need to get yes we also have ndubu ndubu hello ndubu ndubu Yes, ma'am. So what are you going to say, Ndubu? I believe that we should have social distancing in all our classes and most of us should not go to school if our parents feel that it's not safe for us. And give your reasons? Because most parents don't want their learners to go to school and their children. Okay, okay. Okay, good. So well done, everybody. And all those that are brave and could speak out. Uh, I've got one eye on the time here. So um, I want you now just to write your opinion and then put it in the chat box. Okay, write your opinion for me quickly. Okay. So that I can just see that you're actually doing the writing part. Do you want to write it in the chat box? Any opinions going on there? Okay, I don't see anybody actually writing an opinion. Did you want to say something, JD? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, th I think schools should use both computers or tablets and exercise books in the, no, not exercise books, because exercise books can um, contain the, the, like this, like the, droplets of the coronavirus on the papers, then it spreads to the teachers and then the teachers can spread it to the children. So if they use computers and tablets, they must have their own computers and tablets. So they do not uh, have to like pass it on so they can like submit it without the teacher touching books. Oh, that's such a good opinion. Oh my word, I love that. Isn't that clever? Very but nice. I think, ma'am, other people will also might agree with me, but I don't know, ma'am. Okay, but that's but what I you think, think. Yes, they must just use computers and tablets, no exercise books. I like the way that you expressed that. That was an excellent ending to this one. Right. So someone says use laptops for studying during the lockdown. Okay, excellent, everybody. Well done. Very pleased about that. Now, we're obviously not going to have time to do these games again, but um, so before we close, we're going to do our takeaway message and then I just want somebody to tell me again how the teachers played Kahoot, because tomorrow we're going to play Kahoot. So I want to know, what I want to know is, did, um, did you have to use a second device or could you use the laptop that you were playing on? And did it take the whole lesson or was it just part of a lesson? Okay, so now I'm going to ask you in a minute, but let's just finish here. So this is what we did today. We um, worked from week seven and eight. We noticed our definitions written. We wrote a definition. We developed the simple questionnaire. We looked at the bar graph and the report. We learned to express an opinion and um, 
hopefully you all wrote your opinion and we didn't do the last part on playing a board game. So if possible, try and carry out a TV survey on your family, because as JD said, if you actually do it, you're going to remember it better. And this video here shows you on YouTube how to make a video a, a survey. And um, uh, the, the music clips that I use in between are from YouTube, free music channel. Tomorrow, we're going to have a fun revision lesson with Kahoot, and I hope to see you there. Okay, so who would like to just um, answer my um, question about how your other teachers have played it? Have they taken the whole period? And did you have to have a second at uh, a second device? Okay. Who's going to answer? Lindsay, ma'am. Lindsay. Is Lindsay there? Luke. Okay. Luke. Muted himself, ma'am. Okay. JD. Ma'am. Hello, JD. What should I do with that, JD? Thank you. <laughs> Mammy, um, um, the English teachers use two devices, but I don't know if you can use one, but you can use two. Then she connected the share screen with her device. Then we saw the answers there. Then we must connect on our own device so we can play the game, ma'am. And it'll take okay. 15 or to 20 minutes or so, ma'am. Okay, so it wasn't the whole lesson. No, ma'am. Okay. Not really. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so that's what we will do tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing you there. Okay, you're all gonna come to play Kahoot tomorrow. Make sure you've got another device maybe so that you can see the answers and so on. All right, I see three raised hands. Did someone want to say something? Molly? Yes, ma'am, I'm checking. Okay. Ma'am, you must, uh, today if... Oh, now I can't you can hear you. Then you can create um, an, an, an password. They give you a password that tomorrow if you play... And then I would give you the password. Okay. Okay, I've lost Molly, unfortunately. I've lost Molly. Okay. Well, everybody, let me say goodbye and thank you very much for joining us today. It was lovely to see you. And thank you to those that were that shared their, their Hello. Um, thoughts. Hello. Hello. Who's that? Ma'am, not sure. Okay. The hand is up, but the, the sound is not coming through. Let me just see if we can unmute. Unmute. Hello? Ma'am, no luck. Hello? Okay. Well, there, there we, we go. Yes, hello. Ma'am, I wanted to ask what is Kahoot? Uh, so Kahoot is like a quiz game. So um, it's like a competition. Um, so it's a fun way of learning. So so I will ask a question, and then you've the, you've got to be very quick to answer that question by pressing a one. Uh, you know you, you have a choice of answers, and you have to decide on the answer. But the person who who comes up with the answer first will get a certain number of points, and the others will get less points and so on and, and then it adds it all up uh, as we go along so it's just a fun way of learning and choosing between answers yes ma'am okay okay everybody okay so let us
say goodbye. Bye bye. Won't have any more answers today, but I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.